All right. Um, so, so yeah, let's, let's start off. Nika King, yes. Euphoria, Greenleaf, doing your thing out here, Groundlands alum, alumni. Uh, I, I just, I, I'm happy to see all the stuff that you are doing here in Hollywood and that, that you have been doing it. And thanks for taking the time to talk to us about the up the, the season that's going on now, Euphoria season two. Yes. So my first question, I'm gonna start off like, how does it just feel to, to be in a second season of a project that you're working on and have that continued um, character development and story building as an actor? Well, as you know, we've been on a long hiatus uh, because of the pandemic and so, I just, I'm so excited for people to see what we've been working on for the last eight months. And it's been, it's been a journey, but I think it's well worth it. I mean, the first episode uh, premiered last uh, Sunday and people were like over the moon. Our viewers doubled. Uh, people were excited that Nate got his butt beat. So, you know, we're, we're just, we're going along each week and each week is gonna get more intense. Yeah. You know, I was not that guy rooting for Nate to get. I was like, huh? keep it going, keep it going. You you want to root for that guy because as much as you want him to get beat, you're like, you know what? He got a sense of like uh, hubris, you know, like I can't <laughs> get caught, you right. know. Uh, right. Um, but you see throughout, you know, at least from the, that first episode is very intense. Obviously, we're trying to see where it's going to go, mm -hmm. and they definitely showed a lot for you. You know, the, if anything, the first episode of any comeback show you know mm -hmm. season two season three it's got to be like yeah. gotta get you hooked you know yeah. so that way if if a new audience comes in they're like oh okay what and, is this right and this is a minute now so what are we getting from your character this season are we going to see more of you season two is definitely more of leslie it's uh, a little peek into um her childhood i don't have a full episode um but hey there's always season three fingers crossed um, for Leslie to uh, explore more into why she's the way she is, uh, a little bit of her upbringing. But in regards to season two, we see her kind of double down on Rue and really make some hard decisions in regards to keeping her family together and keeping Rue clean or not clean. We, we don't know. We don't know which way it's going to go. Yeah. How, how is that dynamic with you and Zendaya and Storm, because I, I know that we're all a little a little bit older than Zendaya and Storm, but in, in, in reality, we're like all kind of like the same peer group. So how is that relationship off screen with your on screen children that are more <laughs> like the homies, you know? The homies, right. I think the great thing about being a black actress in Hollywood, we kind of have an understanding of the business. We understand the culture. We understand the dynamic of just being an artist uh, in Hollywood. So I'm very like, you know, down to earth. And so my conversations with them is just like an aunt off screen. You know, I want to know with Stormy, like, okay, are you like in college? How is USC? How are the people treating you? You know, so we have those conversations. And when it comes down to Z, very playful, very jokingly, like our relationship is very like kid-like, you know, we're always, it's almost to the point where I'm like, okay, we gotta, we gotta fight in a minute. So I can't, I can't be joking with you right now. I gotta, I gotta get in the moment, you know? And so, um, yeah, I, we have great chemistry, as you know, on, 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 on um, camera and off camera. It's just, it's like a family, like it truly is. Is it a different feeling now coming back, having since the, since season one, she's won an Emmy. Not just any Emmy, the mm -hmm. second Emmy for a black actress in a drama, you know, series, you know, and so she, you know, the show has won Emmys, the show has won accolades. So it's gotten a bigger, it, the, the beef has gotten bigger in terms of what this show is. And right. obviously, I mentioned, you know, it had good numbers coming back on season one. So, and even though you probably shot all the episodes, was it a different feeling coming back now that everybody knows mostly about the show as opposed to like, when you first did the show, you don't know where it was gonna go. Right. I don't think it's a different feeling as much as it is a more uh, a more feeling of like, we want the fans to really 
like see what's going to happen. Like it's so much happening. And, and, and to get that instant reaction with uh, social media and Twitter and Instagram. So for me, it's, it's, it's a different feeling because I'm, I'm, I'm like, I know it's coming. And I, I want the fans, I want to see the fans' reactions and just see how they respond to each character, uh, each char character's journey, their 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 reactions to certain things. So it is it is it's a slight difference because we know what's I know what's coming and because we already uh we watched most of the season. So it's just it's kind of <laughs> like every Sunday, like sitting on edge, like, oh, y'all ready for this? <laughs> Tell me about. Your, your decision to move to LA. I know that, I know you went to uh, University of Florida. We're all SEC on Vanderbilt. Georgia just won the oh, championship, SEC. No, no, he, no, he's, no. He's Cornell <laughs> up there. He's Cornell over there. He don't know that's about oh. the SEC. But, <laughs> but, but you just, but you, you study theater at, at uh, Florida and you decide to, to come all the way across the country to LA. Like, what was that decision like? What was that moment like? Like, like how bold were you at that point? Like how like how was you how were you living right at right at that moment? Well, really truly, my goal was to move to New York and be on Broadway because I equated a theater degree with Broadway, right? I I I didn't really think about a theater degree in terms of TV and film. So when I graduated college, I actually went to New York um, and stayed in Newark, New Jersey don't live in Newark, New Jersey. Maybe it's changed, I don't know, but at the time it was a very industrial, worn down, it was, it was, it was not good, let's just say that. So that didn't help me with uh, staying in New York, but I, I, I stayed for about two months and then I'm like, mm, this is not my cup of tea. And so I, I moved back home to Miami and then I moved to LA because I'm like, you know what, LA is more like Miami, you know, palm trees, the weather, and so when I, and I've been in LA for almost 19, well, 19 years to be exact. So uh, it was a good decision. It was a good, I had to pivot for a minute, but I, I'm glad I, I ended up in LA. <laughs> that, that's, that's a joy, but you know, but, and then once you got to LA and obviously uh, you, you were able to get work and, you know, one from the other, and it's not easy for an actress to get work. Mm -hmm. And then it's, nowadays, it's a matter of whether or not you're on a streaming channel or on a weekly channel. And when you did Greenleaf, obviously it's a weekly show, so it gets it gives time for an audience to get to know who you are as a character and as an actress because they get to see you weekly. You mm -hmm. know, when you're on a streaming show, uh, and all the episodes are airing once, mm -hmm. you know, it's easily like, if you don't grab that audience by week three, forget it. Mm -hmm. You know, so. How was it for you going out there and landing work and then still continuing once Greenleaf was over? Well, Greenleaf is just a small part of my um, filmography. Like I've done, I've done a lot of TV and it's always been like guest star, co-star. I have, uh, I've done, while now I've done uh, Two Broke Girls. I've like most of my, my resume is comedy. And so, cause that was my, that is my background. I studied at Groundlings like Jamal mentioned. And so I moved out here to be a comedian, to be on a sketch show, preferably Saturday Night Live and, and Living in Color when it did come back the second time. So I, I've always been like, you know, like grinding, like doing all kinds of TV. So the idea of being on every week, of course, that's, ideal for an actor you want you want people to get to know you and um in my in my eyes you know be a household name so it it, it was just constantly grinding it, it it didn't like it never got easy it's still it's still not easy it's still a grind it's still work it's still you know coming to the table and and, and um showing people like hey this is my talent this is what i have i have to offer and so and and that's what i love about the industry like i it's difficult, but I like a challenge. So, <laughs> so being yeah, that yeah. you had that SNL, that, that you have that SNL dream, and, and I'm, I'm hoping one day that that pops off. But you're you're in this like this drama right now, and you look mm -hmm. in online, you see in social media people that haven't been groundless trained or anything else popping off all these viral comic skits. Do you do you want to get in? I know you like contractually, you can't just do anything you 
you want at the moment on social media just pop off. But do you like see these people doing skits and like, do you want to get into that arena of like people being able to tell these like little, just I'm, show their I'm little. A, I'm, I'm a creative person. I'm a content creator. So I, I don't, I don't negate, I, I don't like not do those things because I can't. I just find things that are very specific to my brand. And so if it's something that I want to do, I can do it. You know, I write my own material. I do stand up as well. Um, I just directed my first short film called For Sale. So I'm always doing something. So if I want to do something, if I want to go viral, I could go viral. No. <laughs> viral already. If, look, if only it was that easy, huh? If I want to go viral, I can go viral. That's nothing. Like whatever. No. You, euphoria doubling this audience is viral. <laughs> right. Like, and you know, yeah. the great thing is, you know, people are now like I'm I'm literally watching my my social media grow. Like every day, every week, I, I, I get more followers and people are going to get to know me, my personality. And so, of course, the things that I put out are going to only highlight the talents that I have. So I'm, I'm not, you know, if I want to do if, and I will do um, viral content, I, you know, I, I have no no issue with that at all. And going back to the show, and obviously I'm talking about uh, episode one and how much was it on Fez. Mm -hmm. You know, you're watching it from the beginning. You're like, okay, where's this going? You know, as an actor and also a fan of the, your own show, when you're reading these scripts, do you have that moment where you're like, oh, we're going there? You know, especially like, you, you never know. And the best part, of, the best thing about the show is like, you don't know how it's going to end. Right. You know, you look forward. Right. You know, every episode is like, uh oh, you know. Right. So, are you also a fan of the show as opposed to it being a job? Yes, I am a fan, and. We read, I think we read three or four scripts like two days before the pandemic happened because we were actually getting ready to film and then everything of course shut down. But literally at the table read, it was a three hour table read and everybody is like, our mouth is just open and we're, we're, we're just like, okay, we need, we need all the episodes, but, but Sam only kind of gave us, I think the first three or four. And so, and then the pandemic happened, then we had to wait a whole two years. And so to get the whole, you know, eight episodes. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a fan of Euphoria because, and I'm a fan of Sam Levinson, the writer um, and creator and director. He just, he just goes there and, and, and his mind is just so, he's like a mass. I always, I call him a mad scientist because you really don't know what he's going to write and how and and how it's going to be at the end like when you when you see the visual it's so beautiful because marcel the dp he's just next level with it so in in combination with the storytelling and the dp and the acting it's just like it's like the perfect conglomerate of 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 chaos and beauty and drama and trauma and all that stuff mm -hmm. well, i was going to back I was gonna. Okay. You, then what's gonna back that up is, you know, when you're playing a mom to two teenagers, and obviously Rue's character is very complex, you know, hence the shell. You know, what did you do to get insight as to how to play that role with these teenagers? Because obviously, there's yet to come scenes where you're gonna be interacting with both of them, and um, to see like, okay, what did you do to draw more insight? So I have 14 nieces and nephews. 14, and, wow. Yeah, so it's a lot of them. And half are like preteen teenagers. And so I, I'm able to have conversations with them. I've experienced their behaviors. You know, I get the phone calls from their parents. And of course, they're not nowhere near Rue in, in, in her addiction, but it's still the same kind of uh, mannerisms, right? Like Gen Z and millennials, they have a certain way uh, of interacting with people who are older than them. And so I have conversations with them. I also use my own experiences where I would say most of my family were, were addicts and, and dealing with the disease of addiction. So it wasn't too far, you know, God don't take you too far from the truth, you know? So it was just in reversal but I was able to still use those feelings of like helplessness and um, distraught and, 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 and kind of, you know, internalize that for Leslie and, and make her a, a character where you, you feel for her, but at the same time, you know, you're rooting 
for the Bennett family to to be whole and to be well. And and unfortunately, Rue has other plans. So you know, I, I think I think the Bennett family is a great representation of of any family that that's dealt with addiction and um, anxiety and depression and loss. Can you tell me a little bit about the casting process? Because I mean, we think about the Black Moms on TV and we, you know, we think about the Loretta Devines and the Jennifer Lewis, and you're not in, in that mode of, I mean, you you vibrant, you, you I mean, you, you at the club, people try to holler, you know what I'm saying, right, right, right now. So, so I'm like, how did you approach the casting process of like, um, I'm casting as a, as a mom for, for some kids, or did you cast for this particular role? Like, can you just talk about that a little bit? Of course. So the casting process was your traditional audition. You, you get your sides, you go in. And because I was playing, I didn't know who was playing Rue. Um, it was just me being a mother of a young person who is addicted to drugs. I didn't wear any makeup. I was very homely, as they say. You know, I put the two braids in my hair. That's how my mom wore her hair. Growing up, that's the only thing my mom ever did to her hair. She worked at the post office. She had to be up at five o'clock in the morning. My mom was two braids, pinned them two little pins in the back, boom, and ready to go. So I basically you know, created that style, that hairstyle to kind of give me some type of a uh, uh, maternal uh, uh, look. And when I auditioned, you know, I only auditioned the first, the first round. I didn't go to producer session or callback. I was cast off that first tape. And then uh, Zendaya and I did a chemistry read and the rest is history. Um, and I think for me, uh, even though I may not be the traditional black mom, as you say, you know, oh, Huxtable. Huxtable. <laughs> well, I, I, I find myself like in the middle, like Claire yeah. Huxtable and like Loretta Devine, like, you know, and of course there are some uh, personality traits of black mothers that a, a lot of uh, fans, they, they'll say, you're not like the traditional black mom. You're not the stereotypical black mom. And I'm, I'm happy to see that the, 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 the fans are seeing that, right? Because my whole idea of creating Leslie is that, you know, my mom, <laughs> my mom is like, girl, she's getting over on you. Um, you know, like, you walking around with blinders on, like you, you stupid, you, you know, like you. And so it's funny to hear that from my mom, but then also understanding that Leslie does have a level of empathy, right? For her daughter. And probably at the same time, she just is probably tired and she doesn't want to every time interact with Rue, it's a big fight. So I think she chooses her battles and that may come off as weakness, but I think it's, it's her, is her way of uh, creating some normalcy for herself and a little self-care. You know, when you're an actor and you do a show, there's that level of like, okay, I can't always talk about this show, but with this show, you know, I'm sure you've gotten texts from colleagues and friends and maybe anonymous people like, what's gonna happen this episode? You mm -hmm. know, what's gonna happen to that episode? You mm -hmm. know, how hard is it is it to maintain a level of secrecy in which you just can't reveal what's coming up it, it ain't hard i'll be like i can't tell you i'm like look i, I gotta keep my job <laughs> like <laughs> i'm like uh watch sunday at 9 p.m on hbo and hbo max that's all i got to tell you no <laughs> um but no some of my friends are like when are we gonna see you what what episode are you in you know so i think i get more of those texts and dms because people can you even say that can you even tell us what episodes you're gonna be in yeah so i'm 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 in episode two, three, four, five, but my big episode is five. Okay. So I am I am scattered in there uh, for the next uh, couple episodes, and you'll see you'll see uh, you know Leslie doing her thing. But um, you know the great thing is I'm I'm just blessed to be a part of such an amazing show, and and believe me, I even if I'm because let's just be honest, and I don't know if you guys know this, but. Leslie was only supposed to be in one episode. She was only supposed to be a supporting character. And as time went on, um, when we were filming season one, they were watching the dailies and then they start writing more for my character. So 
I'm I'm just blessed. You know, I'm 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 happy to keep my ta- keep my talent going and working during these difficult times. So yeah, so you guys just gotta tune in, man. I don't know what to tell you, man. <laughs> I asked you what I gotta ask you about Blue Tree Cafe, and I'm gonna let Wilson end it off after that. But tell me okay. about this this business venture you got because the Black Tree and Blue Tree. It seems like we need to be in business together. Yeah. I was actually looking at your logo and I saw your tree and it did spark that thought of like the tree, right? Um, It is my mom's business. I am a co-owner of Blue Tree Cafe. We are located in like uh, Fort Lauderdale area and we pivoted once again, pandemics, the pandemic was all about pivoting, right? So we were initially uh, a brick and mortar and now we're gonna be what uh, the industry calls a cloud kitchen. So there'll be multiple virtual dining concepts under one roof. Um, and we're geared towards more uh, plant-based and vegan vegetarian food options, especially in that community, which is underserved predominantly black people who are um, not given the access to healthy food. So my mom and I we were just every day, I just call, had a call with her earlier about construction and, and uh, yeah, we're just, hoping that this, you know, this venture will uh, be something for the community to uh, expand, right, and to learn about uh, wellness and health and and mental health, right, tying back into euphoria, you know, mental health is definitely a big theme, and my whole thing was, I have a platform now, what is it that I want to highlight, and for me, it's always about wellness and mental health. And we, we find that we find that through nutrition, ultimately, that's the beginning point. <laughs> and, to, you know, and I was going to piggyback off that. Obviously, you know, when you're not doing the show, I was going to ask, what are you doing? But like when, you, when you're not doing a show, you're, you're not doing this part, you know, but we're home now. You know, obviously, a lot of events have been postponed for this month and the early parts of February. You know, so we're all home. We're all trying to see what's there to watch, because at some point, it's eight o'clock. There's not much work you can do. Right. What other shows are you watching? <laughs> so I'm watching Ozark. I'm very excited for the new season, January 21st. So I right. um, <laughs> yes, um, I like I like documentaries, um, Black and Missing. I just finished that. Uh, I watched True Story with Kevin Hart. Um, I, I auditioned for one of the roles, so I really just watched to see who got the part. But, but no, <laughs> the, I'm the like, oh, she, was good. she was good. She did her thing. She did her thing. Uh, but no, I'm I'm joking. I listen when I see black folks working. I'm just like, yes, I love to see it. No hating. Like I am truly, truly like respectful of other people and their journey. So yeah. Uh, so those that's what I'm watching. And then I write. I do. I write a lot. You know. I still have. Um, I still have a monthly show that I do at the Improv, which is. Tomorrow, uh, I have a show tomorrow. So yeah, I'm always busy. I, I mean, I, I know oh, there's a lot out of here. Huh? Out here in LA. Yeah, you should come, Jamal. You tomorrow. Come. Yeah, the, I put you on a guest list. I got you, boo. All right. Um, so yeah, I'm always. I, I, I don't like to be. Uh, I don't like to be too stagnant. I, I like to always uh, be moving and 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 being productive. It's great. And obviously, uh, like I said, euphoria is the next step up is, you know, look for it down the road, get that dress ready for the SAG down the road, other events, you know, you know, can't stutter. I was always like, yo, she wore that then. <laughs> yes. You no, know, honey, I, I, I am ready for whatever happens after euphoria. I understand that that's just, you know, that's the jump off point. So, you know, it's, it's all, it's, it's nothing but up from here. Mm-hmm. Yep. Let's do it. We'll, we'll all be supporting you. Every Thank step of the way, you. glad that you took the time. It means a lot. It means, yeah. it means a whole lot to us. Trust me that when we, when we can reach out and get that direct connect and love from uh, from from the actors and, and, and be able to show the love that we want to do, even if there's hurdles in the way that we couldn't get to you before. So where there's a will, there's a way. We'll make it happen. That's what that's you got to do. Right. As long as there's visibility, right. people can Google your name. Like, oh, that's the mom. What does she do? Yeah. Boom, there's that video and they'll read about you and they'll see about you. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me on. This yeah, is yeah. amazing. I, I got to support my black folks, so you know how I do it. We Thank appreciate you. it. Thank All you right. for the time. I'm going to see you the video. Listen. All right. All right. Take care.